Okay. All right, 8182, what's your first name and the state you're calling from? This is uh, Samuel Dye, calling from state, South Carolina. Samuel calling from South Carolina. All right, my neighbor. Okay, Samuel, how do you find out about me? Uh, just went on YouTube, uh, and uh, I just seen a video. I typed in something about can Christians have demons, mm-hmm. and uh, I just kept searching different videos, looking at the deliverance sessions, and then I saw you. You was mm-hmm. like, uh, I don't care what people say. Christian can have a demon. I had a, a <laughs> demon in me, and I was speaking in tongues. I was like. Oh Lord, it's so many. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was so many. Yes, ma'am. And um, it's like, oh well, Lord, it's it's plenty more people people that saved and unsaved that have demons in them, but many pastors don't believe it. And I said that's very grieving to me to know that other people are going through this, and people probably are being tormented and they're being written off like, oh no, that can't happen to you. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, Lord, there's other people suffering. Mm-hmm. Please right. deliver me so mm-hmm. I can deliver, help deliver others. Amen. That's all the way you're able to do it. You first got to be delivered. That's what God did to me. He first had to deliver me before I could, before he could use me to deliver somebody else. you go going to come try to deliver people you ain't delivered. It'd be like the demon that beat you up like the sons of Sceva. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So, so Samuel, what what is it that you you've been dealing with that you want God to to help you today? Okay. Okay. Uh, like in 2012, uh, mm-hmm. I had come to God, and um, I got like I guess how can I say I got I had got demon possessed, and during that time. I had, you know, tried to reach out to God for help. It was, it was like I was shut off, and the demons just kept tormenting me, like, God don't love you no more. God don't want mm-hmm. you. And I was trying to reach out to God, and during that time, they kept tormenting me, tormenting me so much, like, to kill myself, to attack and kill my family. And they just kept, you know, tormenting me. And one day, I was like, God, please, I really want to serve you. And he just kept tormenting me, and it's like, God, I don't love you. And then at night, I would wake up. I would walk the halls and pace up and down the halls on my feet like a goat and would be making different noises. Mm-hmm. And then demons, demons started manifesting inside of me, uh, mm-hmm. demonic tongues, cursing. I would bend my back, like, all the way to the ground and different types what? of stuff. Yeah, it was, it was like I was shut off, and the demons just kept tormenting me, like, God don't love you no more. God don't want mm-hmm. you. And I was trying to reach out to God, and during that time, they kept tormenting me, tormenting me so much, like, to kill myself, to attack and kill my family. And they just kept, you know, tormenting me. And one day, I was like, God, please, I really want to serve you. And he just kept tormenting me, and it's like, God, I don't love you. And then at night, I would wake up, I would walk the halls and pace up and down the halls on my feet like a goat and would be making different noises. Mm-hmm. And then demons, demons started manifesting inside of me, uh, mm-hmm. demonic tongues, cursing. I would bend my back, like, all the way to the ground and different types what? of stuff. Yes. And uh, I couldn't look at a clock because every time I look at the clock, it's even more tormenting. I guess the way I describe it is there's no, there's no time in eternity, I guess. So I guess every mm-hmm. time I would look at a clock, I would be so hot and tormented. Mm-hmm. But then, I, you know, I had the demons just kept tormenting me. And I had, like, I go, oh God, you don't love me no more. And the mm-hmm. demons tormented me so much that I shook my roof and, like, almost like, Satan, you can have me. Mm-hmm. And this is what happened. Yes. I was like, God, don't love me no more. And I did that. And when I did that, I had forgot all about it because I was working. And then I, my mm-hmm. father picked me up. I came home. And in the morning, 
laid over in the morning. My family just started arguing, and the demons was tormenting me to kill myself and attack my family, but I was like, no, I don't want to. And as soon as that happened, uh, I, I had forgot what I had did about my own, the blood stuff I had did. Wait, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on for a moment, Let me get a clear understanding. Uh, what exactly did you do with with your arm when you told Satan that he could have you? I cut my arm with that. Uh, Satan, he can have me. And then the oh, demon. so 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 you cut you cut your arm so that the blood would flow out and come like a blood cut. Basically, something like that. Yes, oh, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And then the demon demon started manifesting in me. And it was hollering and screaming and stuff. And then I went home that night and forgot about it. And later on that night, my family started uh, arguing. And when I went in the kitchen, all of a sudden this red light came in front of me, was hot, and it started chasing me, and it tormented me and ran me out the house. And then I don't know if you know about this, but uh, I ran out and went to my grandmother's house. And it tormented me so bad that I attacked her and almost killed her. Yeah. I don't. Oh. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I don't know if you know about this. It probably showed. It probably showed uh, on the TV about some boy in 2012 mm-hmm. doing something to his grandmother because he couldn't get a girlfriend. But that wasn't the no. case. I was I was demon possessed and people put me like all so over that, the internet. So in other words, that was you. That 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 even had that your case. On, on the media, talk, yes, talk, talking about in 2012. Yes, now, I don't yes, think that's when I started my deliverance session. I probably thought people doing it. I won't even watch any news. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, mm. ma'am. That was me. And when I, I, I went to jail, and then I just kept seeking God. Say, God, I really love you. Want to serve you? If you help me, I'll, I'll serve you. And then I went to the, like the mental place, and then I left there. And one night I was in the cell, I just kept drawing close to God. Next thing you know, uh, I mean, demons were manifesting in there. And then I was just reading the Bible. I laid down in the cell they put me in. Then I heard this, like, loud rumbling in my ears. And then all of a sudden this red light come on my face. Then next thing I heard, these demons start hollering and manifesting. Master, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't punish me. I won't bother this boy anymore. So many things hollering, was hollering, please, master, I'm so sorry for bothering this boy. I didn't mean to torment him. And the demons was hollering, please, master, I'm sorry. I'm going to bother him anymore. And then the demons would come out hollering, please, master, don't punish me. Ah! And then it was like, just come out. Like, it was like 40 or more just coming out. And then... Mm-hmm. And when I got home, I mean, a whole lot of them came out, but when I got home, it was still a lot um, in me, and it was manifesting. Mm-hmm. And then I went to a bookstore in my town and got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I started speaking in tongues. I was like, wow, this is amazing, God. You still love me. And I went grocery shopping, and when I got home, this loud demon came out and hollered so loud. I was like, I hate you. And I left, mm-hmm. like, out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, Lord. And then, and then I started witnessing, and lately I've been soul winning. But recently I had, uh, was hanging with my friend, and he kind of, like, just took me from God. Because I, I just recently started back soul winning a lot, you know, passing out gospel mm-hmm. track, witnessing one-on-one mm-hmm. to people. And I really had fell into bad sin. I knew it was wrong, but, you know, he lied, and then I just got to a point where I got comfortable with it. But then eventually we was doing all kinds of stuff, going to strip clubs and stuff. I was like, Lord, I don't want to do this. And he's like, uh, you, you're a false prophet. you got to do this now. I was like, but I don't want to do this. He's like, no. And I just kept moving to it until it got to a point where, you know, I just kept doing it. And then eventually I stopped chilling with him, but then I started hanging back with him. We would always feel it was almost like a soul tie or something. We always, any time we would leave, we was like, oh, man, I love you, man. It's like, yeah, I, was like, I hate to leave you, man. And then it got to a certain point, I was like, no, nah, man, I love God. I want to serve Jesus again like I used to. Mm-hmm. When I was chewing with him, I had stopped passing out tracks because I was feeling bad. It's like, he's like, oh, bro, you're a false prophet. You ain't no real Christian. Mm-hmm. Like, I, was like, I was like, I love Jesus, man. 
And then I said, no. Uh, I got to see in the of January this year, say, bro, I love you, man, but I'm a real Christian, bro. I can't, I can't keep doing this because I don't want to dishonor mm-hmm. God and mess up uh, people getting saved, people seeing me and, and stuff. So then I said, Lord, I'm going to serve you then and, you know, do what's right. And when I did, I said, bro, I can't chill together no more. I'm a Christian. I got to listen to God. He was like, he scratches us like, real, bro? You still my brother? And I was like, yeah, man, but I love God. Man. I can't I can't do this. I can't compromise him. I said, Lord, I'm about to start back serving you and truly serve you. And when I did that in January, that's when I got really tormented with all kinds mm-hmm. of feelings of guilt, shame, and condemnation. Mm-hmm. And I started understanding more about God and sin. I said, well, God, you tell us not to sin, not only because of the consequences, which is a big thing. We, first of all, mm-hmm. we don't sin because it's dishonoring to you. And you mm-hmm. see also it's consequences. So I say, well, Jesus at the cross, you want victory. So despite how I feel about it, I want to obey you because you love me and you tell me not to mm-hmm. sin. I want to love you. So help mm-hmm. me obey you. And I started walking victory, walking in victory over pornography because I was really uh, struggling with pornography and stuff. I say, Lord, mm-hmm. you really starting to have victory. Like, I got feel so happy. And I said, Lord, thank you for the victory that you wanted to cross. And I started understanding more about sin. I say, Lord, if we will wait and abide in you and trust you to give us victory, you bless us with a godly marriage. Then we can legally mm-hmm. have, you know, the relations that you desire us to with our mm-hmm. wife or a husband or whoever, uh, mm-hmm. if it's a woman. So I was like, God, I'm having victory. I thank you. And I just kept hearing voices. I had been hearing voices for these past few years. Like a voice would come out of my mouth, and I was very mm-hmm. embarrassed. I was like, is this God or not? Because mm-hmm. I would God speak through somebody's mouth like that. It's like it would quote mm-hmm. scripture, but I would feel uncomfortable. I was like, that's not God. It no, sounds no. like God, but it's not God. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. And then mm-hmm. I'll hear voices. I was like, it's just God. And I was like, no, that's not God, because I would feel uncomfortable. And then, Lord, I just, I just parked on the side of the road, I think, a few weeks ago. I was like, God, these voices go in the name of Jesus. As soon as I said that, I was like, God, please, I'm tired of hearing these voices. So I said, these mm-hmm. three voices came out of holler so loud. No! Mm-hmm. So it looks like three voices came out hollering and screaming like, no. And ever since then, I was like, oh, Lord Jesus, please deliver me fully. Help me know you more and mm-hmm. serve you truly. And just be set free from every demon spirit in me, whether they left out or whether I got new ones from the sins I committed. I just mm-hmm. want to be set free to love you wow. and to serve you. So that, that, God has been so so good to you, son. Well, he has set you yes, free ma'am. many, many times. But today, the reason why he, he led you to his servant today is that uh, he wants me to take my thought in, in him and pronounce his will to be done on earth as in heaven. You're, gonna, you, you, you're not disconnected from that witchcraft co- covenant, the ungodly covenant of dodging witchcraft that, that you connect um committed yourself to in the spirit yes, realm, ma'am. you're not disconnected. You remember what the lady lady said before you? Um, that was uh Samanda, how when I yes, was uh, disconnecting her, uh her eyes so but the Lord let her see this filthy, nasty, um, like it was an unbiblical core, like she'd been disconnected from it. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's that spiritual tide in the spirit realm. Also I'm gonna disconnect you from from um from from the soul ties. And the soul ties is is uh whenever we connect our mind, our will and emotions to human beings. That that's a soul tie. Spirit tie is when when our mind, will and emotions and body is connected to spirit beings in the spirit realm. So Lord want me to disconnect you from those spirit beings, from that ungodly covenant of doctrine and witchcraft in the spirit realm, from that evil spirit family. That way you'd be completely disconnected, and then those voices no, no longer come up and out of you because they would not be in you. And then you would be free just to hear your father's voice. You'd be free to hear your father's voice. You won't be hearing those evil voices, okay? Yes, ma'am. So, so again, what's, what's in, God going to do his part? So you just make sure you continue to do your part. Even now, make sure you've done all you can to disconnect yourself from unhealthy relationships. You have to, from now on, saying, watch your relationships. 
cannot connect yourself to, to, to relationships that are unhealthy. They're not like-minded in Christ Jesus. The mind is not on the Lord. So you can't connect yourself to them, whether they're male or female. You cannot because that's an unhealthy relationship. As you have seen in time past, when you connect yourself to relationships that are unhealthy, which are relationships where their minds are not on the Lord, you see what happens. The voices come back and they enter you. Okay? Yes, so, so you're going to have to watch your relationship. You have to watch you know, what you watch on TV. You know, you yes. in time because of, of Hollywood portraying movies. Now they show the whole, whole, whole thing as far as a man and woman having sex. I mean, you could just watch a movie, and, and it, the movie is fine. All of a sudden, there was a sex scene. So you just may have to give up your television watching, you know, okay. because yeah. it's, not health, it's not healthy for you. Spiritual speech is not healthy for you. You have to build your, your relationship in Christ. Now, if you can, if you can um, uh, control your television where you just have just um, a Christian programming, that's totally different. But if you yes, can't control it, then it's best is not to have it. I'm talking to you because because um, what you're coming out of, because when you form that witchcraft covenant with the devil, I mean, you did a blood covenant. There was a blood covenant. Okay? It was a blood covenant. And uh, that puts you at a different level in darkness than someone who has not Perform the blood covenant. That, that's, that's the reason why I come. You, you, you hear all those evil voices, but it just amazed me to hear the grace and mercy of God and how God set you free from many of them. Many of them. That's why you hear them screaming, "Okay, Master, I'm not going to bother the boy anymore," because because Jesus commanded them to take their hands off you. That was just His grace and mercy. It, it won't be because of anything that you you had done to deserve that. But it was just his grace and mercy thing. Yes, ma'am. You know, you I mean you you got something to be thankful for in that how God set you free because of his grace and his love and mercy. And he's gonna com- he's gonna complete what he started in you. He started your deliverance then, but he's gonna complete it today. Because you've got to be disconnected from that blood covenant in the spirit realm. Okay. So again, after, after, after the Lord disconnects you and sets you free, you continue to be submitted to God. You continue to keep your mind and your affection stay on God. As you heard, I don't know if you heard the, the first brother who called in, you know, Pastor Jesse, you know, uh, you keep your mind stayed on him and trust the Lord that at his time, he has your wife. When he, when he, Cause you to find your roof. Um, she ain't gonna need deliverance. She's gonna already be totally, totally set free. You see, okay. but but you have to give God that care. That's a care. So you have to cast that care, that concern upon Him. Trust Him. So He don't want you to spend your days and your nights thinking about your wife or who you're gonna marry or how you're gonna meet her or where you're gonna meet her. You know. You're going to open yourself up for those spirits to come back in you because you're not keeping your mind stayed on heavenly things. Your mind will be, is on earthly things when you sit there and wonder who she is and how she looks and where you're going to meet her and, and, and when, you know. Your mind is on okay. earthly things, and that's an open door for those spirits, those voices to come back into you, into your mind. You understand? So you have to catch that care. Catch that care upon the Lord, as as you heard your her brother, Pastor of Jesse said. Okay, all right. Yes. yes. Now, uh, I now, want to say. Oh. Uh huh. I want to say something quickly. Um, this is girl that I'm talking to. She, well, a young woman actually. She's a Christian, but I'm kind of like courting her. But she she stays in Liberia, and right now our relationship is you know trying to be built right. on Christ. Well, I number one, mother. hold on for a second. Say you haven't gone no far. Number one, she don't. It doesn't matter if she stayed in the United States. Okay, as you heard, I don't know if you heard me tell the young lady before you, Sister Amanda, um, um, regarding her husband. 
needing deliverance. Yeah. And I stated, well, he may say, why does she say, I think I need deliverance? Because, as the Lord revealed to me, darkness is only attracted to darkness. So, so darkness is in her. And that's the reason why darkness was attracted to the darkness in you. That relationship is not from God. That is from the kingdom of darkness to keep both of you to confine to this world, to earthly things, keeping your mind on earthly things. As long as you keep your mind on earthly things, that's an open door for those spirits to enter in and out of you and her. It's having a field day in your mind. That relationship is not a God. Darkness is attracted to darkness. She needs deliverance. If it don't matter if she's a Christian, she needs to be delivered. She's never been delivered just like you have not been totally delivered. So the darkness in you was attracted to the darkness in her and vice versa. And, and as I stated many times, God no longer works behind a veil. Social media is a veil. It's a veil. When Jesus died on that cross, the first thing the Father did was send the angel to tear down that veil. He, he no longer behind a curtain. You can meet him face to face now. Facebook, you cannot know a person because it's like a veil. It's a veil. They hide because you really don't know the true person. The owner presents to you what they want you to think, how they think they are. That is not God. Those relationships are not of God. It's not from God. There's a lot of careless Christians. They hide behind the word Christian. A true Christian is a follower and learner of Jesus Christ. They follow Jesus Christ. They don't follow Facebook. They don't follow Facebook, not a true Christian. No, they follow Jesus Christ. So it's up to you, just like you disconnected from that relationship with that with, with that with that young man, you got to disconnect relationship with, with that young woman. The same principle applies. It's an unhealthy relationship. And you choose which way you want to go. One thing the whole spirit is not going to do, he's not going to force us to choose what is right, but he tells us what is right. Now, if you want to live and be prosperous upon this earth, you must follow Jesus. You know, when Jesus... The Father told Jesus concerning his disciples, the Father led him where they were. And he only said two words, follow me. That's what Jesus said. Jesus did not try to convince them, follow me, because I am Christ Jesus. You follow me, I, you have life. Come on, follow me. No, he just looked at them and said, follow me. He gave them that choice. They had to make that choice. And they had to forsake all. Peter was married. Now, I don't know if he had any kids or not, but he was married. But he had to make that choice to follow Jesus, and they followed Jesus. So you have to make that choice. Are you going to follow Jesus, or are you going to follow social media? And when you, when you choose to follow social media, you are choosing to follow those demon spirits of darkness that you hear. So you make that choice now if you want to be delivered because you if you choose not to follow Christ Jesus, Jesus saying, well, the Spirit's not going to go anywhere. Not going to go anywhere. So you make that choice now. I need you to make it now because i got a couple more calls. Okay. And what you going to do? Uh, Hello? I know. I, I'm praying right now. Lord, I give this to you. Uh, despite what I feel, what I want. I love what you want. This is not true. I give it up to you. I give it up to you. Please lead and guide me. I ask the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So you choose to follow Jesus Christ. Yes. And give up that relationship. Now, after your deliverance, what you need to do, however you uh, use it, Communicate with her. You need to don't just 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 uh, abruptly, you know, just disconnect. You have to let her know what's going on. Okay, you let her know. Say, look, I had to make a choice. 
either you or Jesus. And I chose Jesus. See, you never know that. There was darkness in me. And you was attracted to that darkness. So that means a darkness is attracted to you. Just as I made a choice to serve the Lord, but the Lord can deliver me from all unrighteousness and darkness that, that was living deep down in me, you too must do the same. So it's best that you choose Jesus and get delivered, and I can refer you to God's minister, but it's best that we annul this relationship because this relationship was not from God. It was not from God. It was from the kingdom of darkness because God does not work through a bell anymore. You tell her those things. Now, you tell her and she'll try to hoax conversation, say why, and blah, 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 you have to say, well, I told you what you need to do. Do you want the woman of God information? If she say yes, you give that information, then you no longer connect. If she say no, you, give her, you don't give her that information, and you no longer connect. As a matter of fact, truth, if you on Facebook, you have you need to give up Facebook, deactivate that account. Samuel, you need to spend quality, intimate time with Jesus Christ. Come to know who you are in him, who he is in you. You need to fellowship with the Holy Ghost. You cannot fellowship with the Holy Ghost and at the same time you're always wondering on Facebook. Well, who sent me a notification? I may have a notification. That's a distraction. So it's best to deactivate that account. And other accounts, if you have, on social media. Understand? Okay. It's, it's, it's important. It's important because you, again, need to develop your relationship with the Lord. You've got to develop that relationship with the Lord. That's the only way God can keep us is when we Pursue his righteousness. Pursue him. Okay? And you keep yourself totally free. You keep yourself totally free. And remember, God looking in your heart. He sees your desire. As you do these things, he sees your desire, your heart desire. And he will grant your heart desire so as long as it's in accordance to his will for you. So he said, just trust him. All right? Yes, so, yes, ma'am. Jesus is going to do his part. Now, he wants you to do your part. Now, if you fail to do your part, all those spirits that Jesus cast out of you, they're coming back with a vengeance. And you don't want that to happen. Okay? No, ma'am. Amen. So, I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to speak this disconnection. So, Father, in Jesus' name, again, thank you for the opportunity to minister your love, your mercy, and your grace to your son, Samuel. I thank you, Father, that you planned to raise him up to be a mighty man of God. Many shall come out of that kingdom of darkness to the marvelous light as he uplifts the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Your plan, your purpose, your idea for him in this life, it shall come to pass, in which Jesus Christ shall be glorified. Father, I thank you for keeping him to that day of redemption. Thank you for placing angels around him 24-7. For surely goodness and mercy shall follow him all the days of his life. And he shall dwell in your house forever, Father, in Jesus' name. Continue to give him wisdom, understanding, and revelation of spiritual insight as to who he is in your son, Jesus, and also who Jesus is in him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for keeping him. Father, I also speak concerning doors. Doors of which the enemy have closed off to Samuel. 
He shall wear that those doors be open. I take my thoughts in Jesus' name and I open every door that is your will to be open. And doors that the enemy, Father, had opened that was not your will to be open, I take my thoughts in Jesus' name and I close every door that was not your will to be open. I seal those doors with the blood of Jesus where they can and never ever to be opened or reopened again. Father, we thank you for you are with us as you said in your word, because we only gather together in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. And you said whatever we bind and loose on this earth, you bind and you loose in the heaven. And Father, I thank you that you never get tired of being reminded of your word, and I never get tired of reminding you of your word. For your word is life. Your word is truth. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. So right now, in Jesus' mighty name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in his name, I command spirit wise to gather all your things, gather your loads, your belongings, and get out of God's house. The blood of Jesus commands you. The blood of Jesus commands you to loose him. Loose him and let him go. You come out of his mind. Get your property. Get out of his mind. You get out of his will. You get of his emotions, you get out of his body. Loose his body. Loose his body. Take your chain. Take your shot. Off his body. For the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus commands you to loose him, not to come back, and to let him go. Holy Ghost, I call upon you to do your amazing cleansing work. I call upon you to search and destroy darkness that is dormantly hiding and lurking, running around and saying was mine in his will and even in his emotions. Set them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn every spirit that exalts themselves. Above the knowledge of Jesus Christ, set them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Just ransack his mind. Ransack his mind, Holy Ghost. Ransack his mind by your mighty fire. Burn every image, every picture that's been embedded into the conscious, the memory, even the subconscious of his mind, and set them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn every incident that is in his mind. Set him ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, wash his mind. Wash his mind. Clean his mind. Redeem his mind. Purify his mind. Baptize his mind. Bless his mind. And with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, Holy Ghost fire set the blaze that is dark and lurking, even hiding in his will. Burn, Holy Ghost, burn every spirit that exalts and lifts themselves against the knowledge of God in his will and set them all the blaze. Burn, Holy Ghost, burn, Holy Ghost. Run, shut his will by your mighty fire in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire, wash his will, rinse his will, clean his will, redeem his will, purify his will, ransom and baptize and flush his will in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire set dark the blaze that is darkly holding on to him in his emotion. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn every spirit in 
turned his emotions that exalted and left themselves against the knowledge of God and set them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire, wash his emotions. Clean his emotions. Redeem his emotions. Purify his emotions. Flush his emotions. Baptize his emotions. In and with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire set dark in the blaze. They are darkly holding on to him in his body. Burn every spirit in his body that exalts and lifts themselves against the knowledge of God. Set them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn all manner of snakes that is in his eyes. Burn lust that is in his eyes. Burn impurities that is in his eyes. Burn around his eyes. The front, even the back of his eyes. Holy Ghost fire burn every spirit that comes up. And they look out through the window of his eyes. Shut them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire, wash his eyes. Rinse his eyes. Redeem his eyes. Purify his eyes. Flush his eyes and baptize his eyes. In and whip the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, burn darkness. They normally holding on to him in his mouth. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in his mouth. Set his mouth ablaze. Burn on top of his tongue. Under his tongue. Between his teeth. On his gum. Burn, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost fire even burn in his nose. Burn in his nose. Burn darkness that hides even in his nose and nostrils. Set his nose and not your blade by your mighty fire. Holy Ghost fire burn darkness that hiding in his ears and in his ears. Set his ears in hearing a blade by your mighty fire in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire wash his ears. Rinse his ears. Redeem his ears and hear. Purify his ears and hear. Baptize his ears and hear it. In and with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Ghost fire washes his mouth. Wash his mouth. Wash his mouth. Clean his mouth. Purify, redeem, and rinse his mouth in and with the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire washes nose and nostrils. Wash his nose and nostrils. Clean, redeem, and purify and baptize his nose and nostrils. In and with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, set ablaze darkness that even lives up and down in his throat. Burn those false thumbs in his throat. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' name. Ran shack his throat by your mighty fire. Holy Ghost fire, wash his throat. Rinse his throat. Clean, redeem, purify. Rinse and baptize his throat in and with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire set dark in the blade. They are dormantly holding and hiding deep down in his belly. Set his belly ablaze by your mighty fire. Holy Ghost fire burn all manner of spirits in his belly. They exalt and lift themselves against the knowledge of God. Set them all the blade. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn all manner of spirits that look like snakes. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn their ears. Burn spirits that look like insects, animals, sea creatures. Take on human appearance and form. Burn, Holy Ghost. Just ransack his belly by your mighty fire in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost fire wash his belly. Rinse, clean, redeem, purify, baptize, Rent his belly in and with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Ghost fire celebrates darkness. They are dormantly holding and living in his, his penis. 
set his penis and rectum ablaze, as well as his belly, as well as his stomach, as well as his bladder, his kidneys. Every plant my heavenly Father has not planted in his body, Holy Ghost, uproot and set him ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire, wash those areas. Wrench those areas, clean those areas, redeem those areas, purify those areas, wrench those areas, and flush those areas in and with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, burn, burn up and down his arm. Burn darkness that attach itself up and down his arm. Burn up and down his leg. Burn on his finger. Burn on his toe. Burn those rings on his finger and toe. Burn that crown on his head. Burn all manner of jurors and mm-hmm. objects that were planted in and on his body. Set those objects ablaze by your mighty fire. Holy Ghost fire, burn. Burn those more. Burn them evil markings on his body. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' name. Burn every mark. Every mark made on and in his body. Set those marks ablaze by your mighty fire. Holy Ghost fire. Burn every that was made in and on his body. Set those marks ablaze. Set those images ablaze. Burn from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Holy Ghost fire. Baptize his body. Rinse his body. Purify his body. Redeem his body. Baptize his body and flush his body in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name in the spirit realm, I take the scissors of the most high God. I cut and detach his sandal from that ungodly cover of our dodging witchcraft. For the blood of Jesus disconnects him. The blood of Jesus has forgiven him and his ancestors. The blood of Jesus sets him so to speak. The blood of Jesus pardons him. The blood of Jesus washes him, makes him white as snow. The blood of Jesus destroys every covenant, every country. In Jesus' name, I take my authority. I disconnect Samuel from that evil spirit wife. I disconnect him from that evil spirit husband. I disconnect him an evil spirit man. I disconnect him an evil spirit woman. I disconnect him from evil spirit children. I disconnect him from that total evil spirit family. I disconnect him from every relationship in the spirit realm that my heavenly father did not connect him to. I disconnect because the blood of Jesus disconnects him. The blood of Jesus sets him totally free. The blood of Jesus pardons him. The blood of Jesus forgive him. The blood of Jesus set them totally free in Jesus' mighty name. Even in this natural realm, every relationship my heavenly father did not connect Samuel to. I disconnect because the blood of Jesus disconnects him and sets him totally free in Jesus' mighty name. Samuel, in the mighty name of Jesus, be Totally free in your mind. Be totally free in your will. Be totally free in your emotions. Be totally free in your dreams. Be totally free in your vision. Be totally free in your businesses. Be totally free in your affairs. And be totally free in your body to serve and worship your Lord. And Him only will you serve in spirit and truth. Be free in Jesus, mighty name, be free. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for setting your son totally free. Father, fill your son to overflow with your spirit. Fill his mind to overflow with your spirit. Fill his will to overflow with your spirit. Fill his emotions to overflow with your spirit. Fill his dreams to overflow with your spirit. Fill his vision to overflow with your spirit. Fill his affairs to overflow with your spirit. Fill his businesses to overflow with your spirit. And fill his body to overflow with your spirit, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I also pray for my brother's heart. Holy Ghost, go. Go in his apartment. Search and destroy darkness hiding place. Go in every corner, crack and credit of that apartment. 
and destroy Jordan. Go in every room, every bedroom, and destroy Jordan. Go and destroy Jordan that hoovers around the bed, over and under the bed, the front and foot of the bed, even on top of the bed, in between the sheets and the mattress, and destroy Jordan. Destroy all evil objects in his place. Destroy darkness and their evil objects. Don't leave no space untouched in his environment, but destroy by your fiery presence. Go even outside of his apartment. Destroy darkness that hoovers around the house, under the house, even over the house, and destroy darkness. Holy Ghost fire, destroy all covenant and contracts that was written in his name, in his family name, that was written on top of the earth. They were written under the earth. They were written in the water. Destroy those covenants. Destroy those contracts in Jesus' name. Destroy all manner of objects. All manner of objects, evil objects in his name, in his family name, that are thrown upon the earth, buried on the earth, thrown in the water. Destroy those evil objects, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory for setting your sons holy to truthfully, spiritually worship you. We thank you, Father, for cleaning him, for filling him with your spirit. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Brother Samuel? Yes, ma'am. But you are free. You are totally free. That means demons are no longer housing or living in your mind in your will, in your emotion, in your dream, your vision, your business, and your affairs, and they are no longer in your body. You are free yes, to truthfully and spiritually worship the Lord. So the Lord said, you go and sin no more. At least the worst thing will happen. Keep your mind and your affection stayed on the Lord. Always. You are free. Praise his holy name. So, Brother Samuel, as I was missing fire prayer, what was going on with you? What, what was happening to you? Share me with us. Uh, I just started, you know, I was saying, yes, Lord, believe in me. And then, like, a lot of voices just started coming out, hollering, and, like, almost mm-hmm. like hissing, almost like a snake, and why you want to leave me, and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. not going to leave, and all that type of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. No. Not only did you leave them, as I told the brother before you, Brother Pastor Jesse, they left you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Tell my, why you leave me? No, better yet, they left you. You are totally free. You are totally free. You are free. So you pray him and give him glory. And from this day forth, you, you don't have to tolerate the devil coming to talk to you, Samuel. You do not have to tolerate that. Okay. But when, when it happens, all you do is say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, and I refuse to even hear you. I refuse in Jesus' name. Then you look up to your Heavenly Father, and Heavenly Father, I thank you for deafening my ear to the devil's voice. Well, I choose only to hear your voice and the voice of the stranger. I refuse to follow. You do not have to listen to them. You have the thoughts in Jesus' name to hush them up. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Just like in the natural, it's up to you whether you want to listen to a person. You can choose to listen to them or not. That's your choice. The same thing spiritually. You deliver now. See, before you had no choice because those spirits were in you. But they're not in you no more. You're totally free. Jesus set you free. So now you, you have a choice now. I know. No, I, I refuse to even listen to you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Shut up. And then you lift your eyes up to heaven and you thank your heavenly Father for deafening your ears to the devil's voice because you refuse to follow the voice of the stranger. You only follow his voice. His voice is his word. The Father's voice is Jesus Christ saying is God's word. So that's why you need to get into his word, study and meditate, so you come from men in your Father's voice. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Amen. So how do you feel now? 
I feel much better. I know you do. All that hell is out of you. Uh-huh. All yes, that ma'am. hell, hell. Yes, ma'am. Just got to make those decisions, you know. Just take those, uh, just tell her, you know. Um, right. Like God's will. And just, you know, like you, you obey know. God's instructions. Now, you, now, Brother Sam, you obey God's instructions because if you don't obey his instructions, you open the door, those spirits come in back. So you yes, obey ma'am. God's instructions. It, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. No. No, I know the devil wants to tell you that relationship was of God, but no, God don't work that way. He don't work behind the field. Mm mm. No. You have to think about it. You won't even deliver them. She, the person said they are Christian, and you, you, you knew the hell was in you, and you knew you weren't delivering, but they, they, was, they was attracted to you. So that means darkness is in them if they're attracted to the darkness in you. So light have no fellowship with darkness whatsoever. And don't don't have no fellowship with light. Yes, ma'am. So that show you right then and there that relationship was not of God. That that was your doing and the devil's doing. You being impa- impatient. You keep your mind on earthly things. Now tell you, as long as we keep our mind on earthly things, earthly matters, that gives the devil an uh, open door to attack our emotions, our mind, and our will, and our body. Okay. okay. So, the, so the Lord okay. said you told the free, so you stay free. And how you stay free, James 4, 7, you got to submit to God. Then you be able to resist the devil, and then the devil will run from you, hollering and in terror. But you got to submit to God, be obedient. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. You are free. Glory to his holy name. Thank you, Lord. I've enjoyed... Uh... Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to teach you. I enjoyed you praying for me and, you know, before the mm-hmm. Lord. And mm-hmm. and set me free. You know, I wish to walk Amen. in that freedom. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Now, if you have any further questions, just feel free. Just send me an email at pastor at And as soon as I can, I will respond to your email, okay? Just say, say, uh, Ben King, this is the Samuel from South Carolina. And uh, I, I remember who you are, okay? And, yes, and whenever you can now, you, you, you know, you're in South Carolina, you are next state over. You know, I hope a Holy Ghost Friday visits me once a month. The first one is coming up Saturday, 27th. Uh, you can go to my website at deliverance.center, deliverance.center. And it'll always show you the, uh, the date, time, and location of that meeting. So I advise you to come on out so I can meet you. Bring others with you who need to be healed or delivered. Healed and 